Hello and welcome. I'm joined by Ganesh Natarajan, Vice Chairman and CEO of uh, Zensar Technologies. Uh, Ganesh, thank you very much for speaking with us. Before I ask you about the industry in general, let me ask you about yourself. What devices or gadgets are you carrying right now? Well, right now I have a Samsung wearable watch. Okay. Then I have a Samsung phone and an LG, which is mainly used for my email. I mean, you could argue that I don't need two devices there, but yeah. it makes more sense that way. Okay. And, and how are these devices helping you in your, uh, make life better for you or more efficient for you? Right now, I had to give away two devices and I'm feeling naked. Okay. Does that answer your question? <laughs> it does. It does. So, when, when did you start adopting wearable? Wearable was more of a fad six months back. Mm -hmm. And I still think it's a fad. Mm. Though I, I mean, I like the good stuff. It tells me about the number of steps I take, etc. Mm. But apart from that, why would you really want to look at your email on a watch mm. rather than look at it in your device? Mm. So, I don't see that much of a use mm. till they make you know, good things happen with it. Right. And, and I guess making good things happen is what your customers are trying to do with their customers. Very much. And uh, tell us some of about the, some, some, I mean, tell us about some of the challenges that you're facing there or some of the opportunities perhaps you're facing there. See, the biggest adopters of digital today are obviously uh, the retailers. Mm. Because today, whether it's geo-positioning, almost identifying a potential customer, mm. even when they're maybe driving within a 20-kilometer range. So all that is happening. So mm. retailers are really you know, catching on to this in a big way. Mm whether it's social media, whether it is you know, mobility, geo-positioning, everything. Mm, mm. Manufacturing, we're getting a more of a challenge because mm. while we talk about sensors on the shop floor, mm. connected shop floors, the internet of things, I think there's still a kind of leap of faith mm. to adopt that. Mm -hmm. Where they're saying that, look, okay, mine. I mean, I'll get all this information from machines and things and everything else. But how about the big data? How about the analysis? So there is a tougher sell. Mm. But my belief is that it'll first happen in retail. It's already happening in healthcare, education airlines, hmm. but you know, harder stuff like manufacturing utilities, hmm. probably phase two. But my expectation is four years from now, everybody would hmm. have gone digital. And to what extent to meet that objective are companies like you geared today? We are very geared hmm. because we've actually been investing in for the last two years. Hmm. We have tracked the whole Gartner approach to what they call adaptive sourcing, hmm. which, I mean, which really means that there'll be three types of buyers, the CIO, the CMO and the CDO, hmm. and each one of them will buy in a different way, will need a different method of uh, developing solutions. So I think we have you know, actually got groups working on each of these three categories. But to take your point, if you don't invest in a different method of service provision, it's not going to work. I mean, hmm. Digital is not one incremental thing you do. Hmm. It's really transformational hmm. for the service provider and as well as for the customer. Right. So, what's the, on the customer end, what are the new things that you see happening, which in some ways could affect businesses even back in India or, and of course, the working of businesses that work with them, like you? See, some of them, like I, I, we have a customer in South Africa who is mm. in insurance and wellness. Mm. Now, these guys are saying that you know, how cool it would be if somebody walking into their gym, even as the person enters a door, you're getting all their information through GPS and mobility. And by the time they reach the reception, hmm. the person already knows that maybe they had a cardiac problem a year <laughs> and a half back hmm. and has a, you know, a script that's saying that, look, sir, we know these are your problems and can we help you with that? When I mentioned this to somebody else, that's scary. Hmm. I don't want people to know everything yeah. about myself. But today's generation, everything is out there. Hmm. And you have to choose very quickly, which our customers are choosing, hmm. whether you want privacy or you want targeted marketing. Hmm. And my belief is that all our customers will veer towards the latter. Hmm. They will say that, look, I don't want my time wasted. I don't want a sales guy coming and smiling at me and saying, okay, what can I do for you? But if somebody can give me a solution which does not take too much of my time, I'll be more willing to divulge information, right. which I may not have done earlier. So do you still see companies, for instance, uh, fighting the fundamental battle of whether to digitize or to what extent to digitize? And what is your advice to them? See, anybody who says whether to digitize is an <laughs> ostrich with his head in the sand. <laughs> hmm. Competition will just pass you by. Hmm. No, I don't think we're seeing that. Even in Indian companies, hmm. I mean, we are seeing very traditional trading houses saying, you know, what is this digital? And, you know, we are doing these awareness workshops in multiple countries around the world, including India. Hmm. And I think people are clear that they need to do something. Of course, there's always a reluctance that if there is a big investment to make, for instance, this, what I talked to you about, the beacons hmm. across gyms. Hmm. I mean, you're talking about maybe 4,000 beacons that have to be placed all over the place. So it's not a, it's a non-trivial investment. Hmm. But once people see the return on investment, not maybe in the first year, but over the next three years, then they adopt it. Hmm. What is it going to take for uh, Indian IT companies to meet the challenge in a larger sense? I mean, do we have the, or to what extent do we have the skills, the ability, the talent to think of the ideas, to think of the solutions, to deliver those solutions to large companies overseas? Skills is not a problem because I think the minute you talk Gen Y and most of the younger people are very 
you know, adept at catching up with mm. new technology. I mean, to give you an example, I mean, uh, if, even if you look at the recent elections, mm. if you look at the tech coolness of the typical Amadmi party worker, just shows you, you know, how people mm. are very, very willing to use mm. social media and really you know, propagate stuff through that. Mm. So same thing will happen. So the mm. IT sector is not a problem in skills. What, I think the problem, as always, will lie with middle management. Mm. A project manager who's been managing projects in a certain way for the last maybe 20 years, he'll say, look, I mean, do I really need to cope with agile and all these tools? It's happening. We've mm. seen it in our organization. What again Gartner calls two-speed IT, you know, where the traditional IT, waterfall model, everything else goes on. At the same time, certain applications will not wait mm. for the traditional analysis and design. So I think if a few project managers get converted to two speed, if you then take some of them who will not be converted and say, okay, you just focus on the first speed, which is the traditional model, and get newer and newer, younger and younger people to engage with customers on the new model, I think that's the investment we have to make. Right. So if I were to, in a way, ask you to sum up also, I mean, if, if I were to ask you to identify the two or three th threats and the two or three opportunities in the whole process of going digital or building or shaping a digital future, what would they be? For the provider or for the consumer? For the provider first, for, from your vantage point. See, for the provider, I mean, the fact of the matter is that if you're a traditional infrastructure management, application management kind of guy, 70% of your current business will be cannibalized in the next four years. Hmm. So you can either wait and watch your business dwindle away, okay, mm. which some people are seeing, or you can say, you know, it's like, I mean, you build up the next segment. By the time this one kind of flattens out, they're already there in terms of digital transformation. So for providers, I think the biggest challenge is not seeing trends before they happen. The biggest opportunity is catching a trend early and being a market leader in that space. Tell us about the three threats and the three opportunities. If I were to also ask you to, in some way, sum up uh, the shaping of the digital future agenda. I wish From I your vantage point. <laughs> I wish I could sum up because every day you get a new opportunity. Yeah. In fact, this whole sensors on the shop floor, I mean, it's something that came up just a few days back. Mm. I started off in this conversation by saying, you know, what's the point of a wearable watch? Mm. But somebody was telling me that, the, that when Apple actually introduces its watch, the killer app will be that it will be completely in sync with your, you know, fluids being secreted by your heart. Mm. And I believe that, you know, an hour and a half before a cardiac arrest, there are some fluids that get secreted. It picks that up, mm. and before you're going to have a heart attack, it tells you, tells your doctor, and everything mm. is in shape. Mm. Now, if somebody promised you an application like this, you would go out and buy a watch. Right. So, knowing Apple, I mean, probably in two <laughs> years' time, all of us would be wearing an Apple. Right. So, I think those are the kind of definitive trends mm. that will shape how adoption happens in digital. We are seeing that in retail. I mean, mm. who would have thought that so many e-commerce transactions mm. would happen in India? Mm. And today, mobile commerce mm. in India is actually four times more than uh, uh, US if you mm. compare it with the e-commerce Proportionately. Mm. So it's just amazing, absolutely. So I think these are the things that will shape the future. Mm. The threat I think we've already mentioned. I mean, if you sit like a dinosaur and say that, look, I still have a good core business, that core business will disappear faster than you can imagine. Okay. So what's the one, uh, the big thing or the most exciting thing for India as an IT, IT story uh, in the next year or so? Well, for India as an IT story, it is the opportunity even within India to go digital. I think Digital India is a great idea, and if Digital India just becomes get electronics manufacturing to start and something else, I mean, that's not good enough. I think we'll have to see how every aspect of India, agriculture, healthcare, education, manufacturing, is energized by digital. If that happens, India is a big opportunity. And the minute you use India as a playground, I think you'll kind of build the use cases that can be used anywhere in the world. So the old complaint we had that, you know, exports is faster than, than domestic, might actually change with digital, given the trends that we are seeing in the Indian market. And we are already saying that it's $50 billion already, the Indian IT industry, and it's $100 billion of exports. But don't forget that $50 billion includes a lot of hardware. So. Yeah, yeah. But if you look at the services business in mm. India, yes, I think that can probably gallop mm. if the government opens up enough opportunities, if there is a more stable buying environment. Yes. Right. Ganesh, thank you so much for speaking thank with you. us. Thank you.